Hi, this is Dr. John Bergsmer from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville, and it is Wednesday of Holy Week. Wow, it is hardly possible to absorb the drama of these days. And here we are on Wednesday on the cusp of the Holy Triduum. The passion of our Lord is about to begin, and you can feel the tension in the readings. In fact, the theme of the readings is the fulfillment of Scripture, that the sufferings of the Christ fulfill what the word of of the Lord said would happen through the prophets. And a great example is our first reading, which is from Isaiah 50. Uh, It has several predictions of the suffering of the Christ. For example, I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The prophet Isaiah says, of course, this did not happen to the prophet Isaiah. He Uh, did not uh, receive uh, beatings and the plucking of his beard. So to whom does the prophet refer? Obviously, he's referring to the servant of the Lord, this mysterious figure that dominates the second half of Isaiah from chapters 40 through 66. This particular passage, Isaiah 50, I like to call the little suffering servant passage because it's a smaller version of, of the longer and more famous oracle that extends from the end of Isaiah 52 and then through the famous chapter Isaiah 53. But Isaiah 50 and basically Isaiah 53 are similar. Isaiah 50, much shorter description of the sufferings of the servant. Isaiah 53, the longer, more famous description of the sufferings of the servant that we're going to reserve for Good Friday. Uh, But obviously, in this description of the prophet giving his back to those who beat him and his face to those who pluck his beard, not fulfilled with the prophet Isaiah. It's fulfilled in the servant of the Lord, which is looking forward to Jesus of Nazareth, whom in hindsight we recognize is the servant of the Lord that Isaiah declared would come and save his people from their sins in a priestly self-offering. So we've got Isaiah predicting the sufferings of the Christ. Then in the psalm, we have Psalm 69, which forms a pair with Psalm 22. Together, Psalms 22 and 69 are perhaps the most explicit prophecies of the suffering of the Christ that we get in the Psalter. And so we read in Psalm 69, For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me. Remember, this line, zeal for your house consumes me, is applied to Jesus already in John 2, where our Lord predicts his passion and his resurrection when he says, Tear down this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days. But he spoke of the temple of his body. Well, the psalm goes on. The insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Uh, Insult has broken my heart. I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none for consolers, but no one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. This will be fulfilled in the Gospel of John at the cross in John 19, which we're going to read on Good Friday, etc. So Psalm 69 now has the Psalms of David predicting the sufferings of Jesus. And then we get into the gospel and we read from Matthew 26 how one of the 12, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. Now, Judas was one of the 12, one of Jesus' spiritual little brothers, if you will. And now he seeks out the high priest to sell Jesus for pieces of silver. And this reminds us of an earlier Judas in Scripture, namely Judah, the brother of Joseph, who devised a way to sell his brother Joseph for pieces of silver down to slavery in Egypt. And so 
this is a kind of typological prophecy. So we see that、uh, salvation history is repeating itself as one named Judah sells his brother for pieces of silver、uh, into slavery and presumably even into death. And then. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples approach Jesus. Where do you want us to prepare the Passover? Go into a city, to a certain man, etc. So they do this. They prepare the Passover.、Uh, it was evening. He reclined at table with the twelve. While they were eating,、uh, Jesus said, "Amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me." They were deeply distressed. Surely it is not I, Lord. He said. He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. This is actually an allusion to a line from Psalm 41, the final psalm of Book One of the Psalter, the、uh, the book which、uh, most clearly describes the sufferings of David and David's passions in his life as king and leader of Israel. And in Psalm 41, it speaks of one who has shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. And so now Jesus is alluding to this psalm. He, Jesus, is the son of David, and he is recapitulating the sufferings that David himself experienced. And this psalm that speaks of being betrayed by an intimate companion is now being fulfilled in Jesus' life. Jesus goes on to say, "The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed." Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, "Surely it is not I, Rabbi." Jesus answered, "You have said so," which is an ancient idiom similar to our English saying, "You said it." All right. So, what is the message going on in all these readings? The message is that Jesus' sufferings were not random; they were not flukes. And they were not unforeseen. All the evil that Jesus experienced was foreseen. It was part of the plan. It was predicted by the prophets long ago, out of the mouth of Isaiah, out of the mouth of David in the Psalms,、uh, multiple times. Even typologically,、uh, fulfillments from the books of Moses, as we see in Genesis, where our Lord's experience. Recapitulates the experience of Joseph and being betrayed and sold by his brothers, and so this all took place by the plan of God, as Peter will later preach about the Passion in Acts two on the occasion of Pentecost.、Uh, these sufferings of our Lord were not evils that were outside of God's control that that took Jesus unawares and unexpectedly. Our Lord knew what was going to happen and freely embraced it. But what's the message for us? We are called, like Jesus, to take up our cross daily and share His sufferings while we are in this life. And the sufferings that we experience are also not random flukes. They are not unforeseen. They are not just chaotic evils that happen to us outside of God's will. The sufferings of all those who are baptized into Christ Jesus are full of meaning. Our sufferings, my sufferings, your sufferings, have been foreseen by God, and they are intended for us to share in the sufferings of Christ for the salvation of the world. So, whatever troubles, whatever challenges, whatever difficulties and contradictions you are facing today. I am facing today. Let us rest assured; they are part of God's plan for our life, and if we accept them and embrace them with love and generosity, God will use our difficulties, our sufferings, our personal passions, for the salvation of our family, our friends, and indeed of the world, because they have that power when they are joined to the passion of Christ. Let's rest assured that all is happening according to the providence and divine foresight of our loving Father this day, as we meditate on God's Word on this Holy Wednesday, on the cusp of the Sacred Triduum. This has been Dr. John Bergsma from the Saint Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville.